I'm just going to stay on the line with you until the paramedics are with you, all right? Okay. Can you check up on them and see where they're at? They're on scene right now, but they have to stage until they're given permission to go inside. So going to our top story today, the investigation into the deadly mauling in San Francisco Zoo. One man is dead, two hospitalized after a Siberian tiger escaped her cage and attacked. Now the zoo is releasing new details about the investigation. Tiger attack and shares of the safety concerns. It's amazing how many news stories you see where people are being attacked by exotic animals. How is it possible that the authorities are not putting a stop to this obvious public threat? And how is it that there are so many lions and tigers in the backyards of America that people keep getting attacked? The answer is, there's not. For the next few minutes, we're going to set aside all the hype and the sensationalism, and we're going to take a rational and realistic look at the role of exotic cats in America. So why is it that there are so many news reports about people being attacked? There is no doubt that people definitely have a fascination with big cats. This is one of the reasons that lion and tiger exhibits are so popular at zoos. This is also something that the media recognizes and they use it to their advantage. The real reason that there are so many news stories about big cat attacks can be summed up in one word. Ratings. Drama makes money. The more a story is sensationalized, the more compelling it becomes. We as a society love drama. Why do you think so many people watch Jerry Springer? What's better than some dysfunctional family throwing chairs at each other? When it comes to exotic cats, you never hear that someone is bitten or scratched. You always hear that they're either mauled or they're brutally attacked. This is sensationalism. So the next time you see a dangerous animal catastrophe in the media, remember, that in the global scheme of things, a disproportionate amount of attention is being paid because it is generating money. Okay, so I've just sat here and told you that the threat of being eaten by a big cat is not as great as the media would have you believe. If we're going to be realistic about this, what's my justification for saying that? the numbers. In this country, you are statistically more than twice as likely to be killed by a vending machine than you are by a big cat. Yeah, I can just see the parents calling in now. Johnny won't be coming to school today. The cafeteria is just way too dangerous. Good luck ever going to a gas station or a grocery store again. Now I just used the word statistically. Whenever you hear this word, you should take it with a grain of salt. You may already know that statistics are not straightforward they can be manipulated to fit someone's needs. So what are the hard facts? How many people have actually died from big cat attacks? Between 1990 and 2009, there have been 20 fatalities that have been associated with captive exotic felines in the United States. This averages out to one death per year. This may sound like a lot. That's until you take into account that last year, 358 people were killed by kites. If that doesn't bring things into perspective, 652 people were killed last year by chairs, and 791 by defective toasters. You are more than twice as likely to win the Powerball lottery twice than you are to die by being attacked by a big cat. The perceived danger we have as a society is simply unjustified. The very important common factor in all of the 20 fatalities in the past 20 years, and I want you to pay attention here, is that every single person that died willingly put themselves into that position. Again, every person was intentionally involved with those animals. This means that no lion or tiger has ever escaped into a neighborhood and eaten an innocent bystander. It has never, 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 it has never happened. If you want something realistic to worry about, worry about the next time you have to get into a car.
At some point, I'm sure you've heard the claim that it's morally wrong to keep wild animals in captivity. Over the past couple decades, there's been a mass emergence of animal rights organizations. In theory, their concepts are relevant and significant. The welfare of animals and the necessity of treating them ethically and humanely is something that is very important. I wholeheartedly believe that people who take part and are contributing to these groups are doing so out of a desire to do good. The reality, however, of animal rights organizations is altogether different. First of all, the methods and the viewpoints of some of these organizations tend to be on the extreme side. In fact, the FBI, the ATF, and the Department of Homeland Security currently consider animal extremists as one of the top priorities of domestic terrorism. Granted, not everyone's going around blowing up chicken farms, but the methods they use to gain public attention are equally assorted. Not only do you have public demonstrations, you have propaganda for the whole family. What better educational tool is there for your four-year-old than the mass-distributed comic book, Your Mommy Kills Animals? Keep in mind that many of the so-called animal welfare organizations believe that your dog or cat is better off dead than being your pet. So what's the point of me going on a rant about all of this? The point is that animal rights in this country is a half billion dollar a year industry. And the money you're donating, thinking it's going to help save stray dogs and cats, is actually going to a massive lobbying campaign, which is helping to turn into law these very radical viewpoints. Again, if we look back at the media, every time you see a story about something bad involving animals, there's a representative from some animal rights organization telling everybody exactly what went wrong. Do you ever wonder what the qualifications of those people are? Have they ever been around the animal that they're talking about? Or are they just spouting some anthropomorphic opinion that's not based on any first-hand knowledge? Their idealistic opinions are often unrealistic and have nothing to do with the real world. My favorite statement, and this seems to be the battle cry for animal rights, is, these animals don't belong here, they belong in the wild. So you think these animals belong in the wild. Aside from the fact that all the exotic cats in the United States were born in captivity and would never survive in the wild, what wild do you actually think there is? No, really. What physical location on Earth is there that are going to support these animals in their natural state? The vast majority of the viable habitats that these animals live in have been taken over by people. With a human population nearing 7 billion people, all the places that we think of as wild just no longer exist. There are 36 species of wildcats around the globe, and there certainly are small protected pockets of habitat which these felines still reside, but none of them are doing well. Of the 36 species, every single one is either endangered or threatened. Let's use the tiger as an example of what's going on around the world with exotic cats. So far, a third of all the subspecies have already become extinct, and there are only about 4,000 tigers left in all of the wild. India has the highest population of tigers anywhere in the world, and they only have about 1,700. India is roughly five times the size of Texas, and there are one billion people that live there. There are small islands of forest adrift in the sea of humanity. But even the tigers that live in these protected parks are still not safe. Some of the big tiger parks in India just realized they don't have any tigers left in their forests. The Tiger Task Force, established by the Indian government, readily admits that their anti-poaching efforts are almost doing nothing to help save the tiger. It is expected that the tiger will be extinct in the wild in the next 10 to 15 years. Think of that, no more wild tigers. So the next time you hear that there are more tigers in private hands in the United States than there are in the wilds of India, realize this is not a travesty. This is something we should be ecstatic about. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned taking a realistic look at exotic cats. For those of you who think that it's morally inappropriate to keep these exotic cats in captivity, I want you to consider that it was human interaction that prevented these animals from flourishing in the wild to start with. The concept that all exotic cats need to be in the wild is unfortunately unrealistic. Unless you can stop widespread environmental damage, rampant poaching, and global overpopulation, Captive management of these felines is the best chance to avoid total species extinction. To ignore or condemn our best chance of saving these cats because of what is or is not politically correct is not only irresponsible, it's morally reprehensible. Forget all the propaganda you've heard and take a look at the big picture. We need to take immediate steps to right the wrongs that have already been committed.